In this video, we're going to begin our discussion about fiduciary obligations. And the first thing that is important to know is that trustees are fiduciaries. So when it comes to fiduciary obligations, all the obligations of a fiduciary apply to trustees. But it's also important to bear in mind that not all fiduciaries are trustees. And that's something that we will look at too and look at the different fiduciary relationships that exist. And although trustees, by virtue of being fiduciaries, owe fiduciary duties to their beneficiaries, they also have additional trustee-specific duties. The fiduciary duty comprises a number of overlapping obligations concerned to promote loyalty or faithfulness. It is the defining duty of trusteeship. So a fiduciary relationship is, in essence, a relationship of trust and loyalty and in this video we're going to have a very quick look at what is meant by a fiduciary obligation before in a subsequent video we really dive down into what a trustee needs to do to you know do their job properly and legally so the expression fiduciary duty is properly confined to those duties which are peculiar to fiduciaries and the breach of which attracts legal consequences differing from those consequent upon the breach of other duties. And that's from Bristol and West Building Society uh, and Matthew from 1998. This definition doesn't really help us that much. It's just saying a fiduciary duty is a duty owed by fiduciaries and the breach of such a duty is different to a breach of a different duty. So, you know, that doesn't really help us that much at all. But I would recommend you that you read this case here. And that's because it tells us exactly what a fiduciary obligation is. So fiduciary duties are more onerous and specific than other duties. A fiduciary relationship arises because the fiduciary owes a duty of trust and confidence to the other party, not vice versa. So it is trust and confidence that makes this relationship special. The relationship arises because of the duty. The duty doesn't arise because of the relationship. It is an obligation owed by the fiduciary to the other party and not vice versa. So for there to be a breach of a fiduciary duty, there must be a breach of the duty of trust and confidence. And these fiduciary obligations are rigorously enforced on the grounds of public policy. Now, a fiduciary duty is a duty to act in the best interests of another, if necessary, in preference to one's own interests. So, where the interest of the fiduciary conflicts with the interest of the beneficiary, if it is a fiduciary duty, you are, are obliged to act in the beneficiary's interest and not your own. So, that is the essence of the fiduciary duty. So the other person should be put first, as was stated in the Wallenberg case. The essence of a fiduciary relationship is that the fiduciary subordinates his own interests to his principles. The categories of fiduciaries are not closed. A fiduciary relationship may arise in circumstances other than those established. So this means that if someone owes a duty of trust and confidence, a fiduciary relationship may be found on the basis of the specific fact, irrespective of whether it has been previously found there has been a fiduciary relationship in such a circumstance. So as we will see, some relationships have a natural fiduciary obligation contained within, within them. So for example, a solicitor and a client, a trustee and a beneficiary. However, these categories of relations are not closed. It is open to the court to find a fiduciary relationship in new forms, in new circumstances. In the Bristol and West Building Society case, it will state that a fiduciary is someone who has undertaken to act for or on behalf of another in a particular manner in circumstances which give rise to a relationship of trust and confidence. Accordingly, a fiduciary must inter alia act in good faith. He must not make a profit out of the trust. He must not place himself in a position where his duty and his interest may conflict and he may not act for his own benefit 
or for the benefit of a third person without the fully informed consent of his principal. So these are some principal obligations that make up the fiduciary duty. In other words, these are the obligations that the trustee, for example, will owe to the beneficiary because of the trustee beneficiary relationship. And because of that, it is one of a fiduciary nature and therefore obligations are owed. So the, the fiduciary duty was developed in chancery and it is equitable in the sense equitable in the sense that it is broadly speaking concerned to restrain unconscionable abuse of legal power and position. But it is not equitable in the usual sense of being concerned to achieve justice between the parties in a particular case. It is not concerned to achieve fairness between the trustee and the beneficiary of his trust or between a fiduciary and his principal. On the contrary, it is a rule of public policy that is strictly applied against trustees in order to set an example and to encourage good behaviour in all who hold positions of trust. Many relationships such as the duty of care and tort or contractual duties require the person under the duty to take other person's interests into account and will provide a remedy for infringing that interest. So there are other relationships where you owe duties to other people, for example, the duty of care in tort and contractual duties taken on voluntarily. These may require you to take other people's interests into account and any failure to take other people's interests into account may lead to a remedy. Now, Professor Burks has analysed three levels of duties owed to another. There is the negative duty to refrain from harming. So if what you're about to do will cause harm, don't do it. This broadly corresponds to the duties in tort. So as long as you're not harming anyone, this would be the full extent of your duty. Then there is the positive duty to act for another. So you need to actually do something on behalf of someone because that is your duty. This duty may be imposed by a contract. And then there is the positive and disinterested duty to put another person's interest ahead of your own. And so this is all about subordinating your own interest for someone else. And this is, this is the highest level of duty. So this is the duty not only to act for another, but also to put their interest ahead of your own. And that is what we call the fiduciary duty. Okay. And... In the next video, I'm going to dive into some different established fiduciary relationships and look at the different types of relationships where a fiduciary relationship has arisen. And then we will also look at non-fiduciary relationships too, so you get a better understanding as to what is meant by a fiduciary relationship. But if you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment below and I'll get straight back to you. And make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching.